Question four, many substances are conduct electricity. Part A, identify all particles responsible for the passage of electricity in A. All right, first we have graphite. So graphite has electrons carrying energy throughout the structure. Magnesium ribbon, it also has the electrons from the sea of electrons or the mobile electrons from the sea of electrons carrying charge throughout the metal and molten copper 2 bromide all right so molten copper 2 bromide has the ions copper 2 plus and bromide uh, the copper ion and the bromide ion and both of these charges are responsible for carrying out uh, electricity for conducting electricity so we have the copper 2 and the bromide ion Right. Part B, a student uses the following apparatus to electrolyze concentrated aqueous sodium chloride using inert electrodes. Okay, so first off, um, whenever we have electrolysis, it is, um, you know, it is prudent to write down the all of the ions which we have in our electrolyte. So we have the ions of sodium and hydrogen because it is aqueous which means it is dissolved in water so we have the positive ions are going to be sodium ion and the hydrogen ion along with the negative ions being chloride ion and the hydroxide ions okay so i think i'm going to uh, write it down over here we have our sodium ion with um, hydrogen ion and then we have the negative ions as um, chlorine ion and the hydroxide ion All right so we have the negative and the positive mm -hmm. ions now uh, whenever we have concentrated um, this sodium chloride solution we always have chlorine deposited at the positive electrode that is anode because chlorine is well concentrated uh, this uh, is more concentrated the amount of chlorine in the solution is going to be more concentrated so we are so chlorine is going to be deposited on the positive electrode and uh, sodium and hydrogen over here now sodium is more reactive than hydrogen so sodium is going to stay in the electrolyte it is going to be the same ion and hydrogen is going to be deposited at the negative electrode that is cathode All right so part one suggest the name of a metal which could be used as an inert electrode this can be platinum part two name the gas formed at the positive electrode all right so as we discussed over here since this um, solution is concentrated the amount of ions of chlorine is going to be greater so the gas is going to be chlorine write an half I, an ionic half equation for the reaction occurring at the negative electrode include state symbols all right so at the negative electrode we have the positive ions yes, uh, ion of hydrogen being deposited so we have um, hydrogen ion all right now you see we want the in the reactant in the, on the product side we're going to have two hydrogen atoms that is hydrogen in its diatomic molecule form so which means oh, on the reactant side we're also going to be having two hydrogen ions now two hydrogen ions mean with each having one less electron we need to equate this we need to make this into the hydrogen over here which has equal number of protons and electrons now with two less electrons we need to add two electrons so the charge is cancelled and we have our hydrogen over here in gas form and ions always exist in aqueous form over here this is aqueous right part four how 
if at all does the pH of the solution change during the electrolysis explain your answer all right so first we have um, all of the different ions we have the chloride ion and the hydroxide hydrogen and the sodium ion but um, as the reaction proceeds we are only left with sodium hydroxide because chlorine and hydrogen are deposited at the cathode so we're left with uh, sodium hydroxide which is uh, which is alkaline in nature so the pH naturally it increases so we have the So the pH increases as um, sodium hydroxide forms. Because it is alkaline in nature, Alright, so this covers all of our three points. So, uh, first point being sodium uh, pH increases, and the second point being formation of sodium hydroxide, and the third point being that it is alkaline in nature. Moving on to part C, a student used the following electrolytical electrochemical cell. The reading on the voltmeter was positive 1.10 volt. Okay, so we have the voltage given and then we have um, both of the electrodes being metals, right? So in electrochemical cells, what happens is um, electrons move from the more reactive metal. In this case, this is zinc. So electrons move from the more reactive metal towards the less reactive metal, which here is copper. So draw an arrow on the diagram to show the direction of electron flow. All right, so this is going to be from zinc to copper because zinc is more reactive. It is oxidized and becomes zinc ion. Right. Suggest the change, if any, in the voltmeter reading if zinc electrode was replaced with an iron electrode. Explain your answer. All right. In the reactivity series, uh, we have iron being less reactive than zinc. So what happens is uh, in electrochemical uh, cells, when the greater the difference between the metals in reactivity series, the greater the charge. But since iron is less reactive than zinc in the reactivity series, it is closer to copper than zinc is. So the difference between um, iron and copper is far less than the difference between zinc and copper. The difference decreases so the voltage is also going to decrease so the reading decreases because It is less than zinc and copper. All right, part three, the zinc electrode was replaced with a silver electrode. All right, so silver is uh, less reactive than zinc. So the distance again here decreases in the reactivity series. So naturally we're going to have a much smaller voltage reading, much less voltage reading. The reading on the voltmeter was minus negative 0.46 all right so the change of sign over here from positive to negative denotes that the um, direction of movement of electrons electrons is changing okay so suggest why the sign of voltmeter reading becomes negative the question we had zinc and copper as our initial electrodes with zinc being the more reactive metal 
and copper being less reactive metal and so zinc lost its electrons now uh, negative uh, denotes that the electrons are moving in the opposite direction that is th now the electrons are moving from copper electrode to the silver electrode which means copper here is more uh, more reactive than silver because it is losing electron electron so suggest why the sign of the voltmeter becomes negative now this is because electrons move in the opposite direction from copper to silver so the sign changes and this is because copper is more reactive than silver so it loses electrons and it is oxidized all right that's it we're done with this question moving on to question number five okay methanol is a member of homologous series of alcohols a methanol can be made from methane in a two-step process step one methane is reacted with chlorine to uh, chlorine gas to produce chloromethane step two chloromethane is reacted with sodium hydroxide to produce methanol and one other product part one what condition is are what conditions are needed in step one all right so we need uv or ultraviolet light over here all right so we have ultraviolet light over here part two write the chemical equation for the reaction which occurs in step one okay so we have methane reacting with chlorine forming chloromethane so one of these hydrogen atoms in methane is replaced by chlorine forming chloromethane and then we have one hydrogen atom left with one chlorine atom forming hydro hydrogen chloride step the uh, right part 2 state the organic reaction occurring in step 1 so this is a substitution reaction all right part 4 complete the chemical equation for step 2 okay so over here we have the methyl group reacting with the hydroxide ion and this leaves us with um, sodium and chlorine forming sodium chloride that's it now draw a dot and cross diagram to show the electron arrangement in a molecule of methanol all right so let's have a look at the periodic table we have um, carbon has six electrons of uh, which means in its outer shell it has only four electrons and it needs four extra electrons to complete its outer shell to eight electrons okay so in the diagram we can figure it out that those four electrons are going to be coming from one atom uh, each of those four electrons is going to be coming from a different atom from a different atom of th three of which being hydrogen and one of which is oxygen so i'm going to be using um the cross for carbon and dot for ox hydrogen all right so hydrogen only has um one electron in its shell now it's going to share it's going to be sharing one electron with carbon so it gains its full complete first shell of two electrons so this satisfies satisfies its needs and then uh, carbon has the last four shell which is it is going to be sharing with oxygen all right i'm going to be using a semicolon for oxygen just to make it a bit different okay so hydrogen over here needs one only one electron to be sharing with oxygen so this here all right i'm denoting these oxygen atoms oxygen electrons with these semicolons please do not get confused i'm just doing this to make it a bit different from all of those x and o's and then oxygen is going to have four left remaining electrons as you can see in the periodic table oxygen has an atomic number eight so this means it has six electrons in its outer shell 
one, two, three, four, five, and six over here. And then it's sharing one electron with carbon, one with hydrogen. And this completes our shells. All right. Part C, methanol reacts with propanoic acid to form an ester with a molecular formula C4H8O2. Part 1, name the ester form when methanol reacts with, metha uh, with propanoic acid. Alright, so um, esters always have their name starting with the alcohol and ending with the, uh, with the acids. So the alcohol in this case is methanol, so we'll have methyl propanoate. Alright, so we have a methyl propanoate name. One other substance formed when, methyl, when methanol reacts with propanoic acid. This is the byproduct here is water. Okay, draw the structure of an ester, which is structural, which, which is a structural isomer of the ester named in C part one. Show all of the atoms and all of the bonds. Alright, so a structural isomer means that um, the double bond here is going to be in different positions. Okay, for that, let me first draw methyl propanoate. So, um, this over here is our methyl propanoate with its um, hydroxide group removed. And once that is removed, we have our propanoic acid with its um, uh, only hydrogen removed. So we'll be having three carbon atoms with the last one having a double bond with oxygen and we have our oxygen over here as well. So we're going to be completing these hydrogen atoms over here. So this is our methyl propanoate. Now, whenever we have um, isomers, the only thing that is going to be changing is the position of this double bond between carbon and um, oxygen. So we can draw this, we can draw it this way by the double bond being on the second carbon atom instead of the third one. And then we have our remaining carbon and hydrogen atoms over here. So we're left with this structure. So this one over here is the answer. Now we can count the number of hydrogen over here, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, which is the same number of hydrogen atoms over here and four carbon atoms and two oxygen atoms. So our answer is correct. Right. Part four, state the conditions needed to form an ester from a carboxylic acid and an alcohol. So we need um, concentrated sulfuric acid as, as a catalyst in this reaction. So catalyst of uh, sulfuric acid. All right, so we are done with this paper.